pleasant good afternoon ladies and gentlemen my name is Ren coming from UB Athletics and we're about to interview another student athlete alumni or coach for a series that we're calling off season what is off season it's what exactly is as it is it's what we did when the world country and sporting arena shut down so this evening we have the one and only female extraordinaire Raven and she is on top. dope. That is, dope. I gotta ask if, if this is what coaches have done doing for judo. Like, she on time on time. Like, she's the first one to sign in on time. That's deep. But shout out to Raven. Raven, how are you? Good. You were literally the first one to sign on. Like, you was ready for this. Thank you. Say it again. I was scared. I was scared because you had a dope like background or gold, like your medals. <sighs> All right, so let's do a sound check. I, I hear a little breaking up. Speak for me. Hello. Okay, I can hear you. Okay, so without further ado, this is your off season, and how how does it feel to have all this time off in the world? How it feels? And again, it gives you time to time to. But it's breaking up a little. I don't know if it's me. I, I need to test it. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I want to make sure you all got hair out. Speak again. I want to make sure they can hear you. If it's just me, that's fine. Hello? Can you I... hear me? No. Is it better now? All right. I'm hearing you. I want you to just say a ABCs. Just say ABCs. In, in, for no other reason, standard. Sound check. A B C D E F G H I J K. All right. All right, we're good. So again, um, we're in. You know the status. Everybody knows the status of the world. But lockdown. Um, how does how how are you? How are your family? Well, we're good. Everybody's safe, so it's not really. It just this quarantine just brings us all together, basically. Like we. Yeah, we find things to do in the house to actually, like, interact, other than just being... We, we about to kill each other in this house, so shout out to my mom and my, my sister, but it getting, it getting rough, you know? Yeah. It getting rough. Like, the other day, nobody wanted to watch this, just, and it's all about having stunts, you know? Like, let's see you really run this. Sorry. This is just the end of me, honestly. I pay so much to do my dishes, because for the house like this... Mm -hmm. Oh, man. So let's get right to it, man. So the first question I want to know is, when did your passion for judo begin? And is judo the only sport you can play, or were there others? Well, uh, initially, my first sport was soccer. I started off playing soccer from grade five. So I was about nine when I started playing. And then it was from nine years old straight to 16 and i ended up ended up um trying out for the national team for soccer so it was like uh that was my initial sport that i used to do um it was field events for track i did softball also for about three which field events. which field events which which field events the field events like short put long jump and it was traveling yeah. Hold on now, short put, javelin, I get, because you know you'd be throwing them blows up in judo. But long jump, you'll get a long jump as well? I wouldn't say, and I mean, you know, just to like participate in VAISS and stuff like that, then that's. Mm. But like, javelin and short put was more of it, for real. Okay, so you're yeah. doing short put, javelin. So when did judo come into all this? Um, so when I graduated from high school, I still wanted to be uh, physically active. So I was in part with the Rangers, the Royal Bahamas Defense Force Rangers program. And, uh, you know, the Bahamas Student Federation came into contact with our program and were looking for individuals to participate in a summer camp. And in this summer camp, it, it involved other Olympics, um, other Olympic sports such as fencing, boxing, and then there was judo. So it caught my interest because I still want to be um, a part of the sports life. So I want to be an athlete, but I just saw 
graduate and on the 10th year of school, I said to myself, okay, let me try something. And I went ahead and I gone into the um, program, the little summer camp that they had. And it turns out I kind of was good at it. It wasn't like... You were good at beating up people? Is that what you're telling me? Um, I have a pass. Like, with... <laughs> you don't have to tell us. You don't have to tell us. That's your secret. Uh, yeah, I have, a, I have a pass. My father is a uh, second degree black belt in ninjutsu. So, okay. Yeah, I have, I have experience with self-defense. And then when judo came along, I was just like, okay, let me just take the mask and lead into that circle right there. So you didn't only have a pass, you had an advantage. Yeah. You, you, you kind of previewed to it, you know, daddy could be like, yeah, lift, lift your foot up, girl, lift your foot up. A little, a little one and two, you know, a little something extra. That's cool. So I'm hearing, which high school did you graduate from? Just for the audience, you know? That's Jordan Prince Will. Right All right. Off. Dirty yeah. birds, yeah, yeah, we know the dirty birds, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> so you finished with Jordan Prince William. You're moving into no dis disrespect to any Jordan Prince William. Last time I did that, a lot of people DM me like try yeah. it again. So I apologize. But you're finishing with high school. You're transitioning to college. Did you go straight into college or to the college at Bahamas? And did you have any aspirations to probably go abroad? Um. So. My initial plan was to go ahead to university, well, well college the Rohanus at the time, for about a year and then go off. But then as I like continued my semesters at College of Bahamas, I was like, keep this, I just, you know, finish it. Let me just finish this aspect and then move on when I want to, like, as soon as I get this degree, I go on to something bigger. So, mm -hmm. And and in that process, I this goes, this goes, is he a family member? Is he smart just now? Say. Yeah. Well, no, he's one of my friends from Grenada. Okay. All right. Shout out to Grenada. Not Mega, not in Parat. Um, <laughs> but um, so you're, you're in college, you're in COB, and then there's this announcement. Well, actually, no, you skipped a few things. Didn't you go off and compete for judo? Didn't you do some stuff for the country? Ooh, so I did a lot of things, actually. I participated... And the very first Carifta held for judo, I placed gold in that. And then we had other, um, we have different tournaments from abroad, like the U.S. Open, and we had Florida Open. And each one of those, I could say I meddled in. But as I came to the university, it was more of an outreach. We went to further places, reached the other judokas around the world. It was quite an experience. I could say the furthest that I have been was California. Okay. Yeah, where I did place third in a division that I just was encountered with. Like, I wasn't used to this division. This is my first time in this division. And, yeah, it was interesting. So you're a natural fighter. You have done it before, but you also mentioned that um, the traveling experiences that you had through the University of the Bahamas were a little different than those before. Tell us about that. Tell us about maybe the transition, the weekend transition, you know, like finishing class on Thursday, getting on a flight on Friday. Tell for any audience or any young lady who's probably watching you, tell us about that experience of traveling abroad with the University of the Bahamas. Okay, well, traveling with the university was, well, the places that they got us to compete at was, first of all, amazing because, you know, they're really far out there. And when it came to schoolwork, I would uh, come into contact with my lecturers, let them know what it is I'm going through, because they know already, but, you know, it's good to brief them, let them know. And with that, they would allow me, well, most of them, they would allow me to either complete my assignment ahead of time or try to do it whilst I'm at the meet. So, like, when I come off the plane and we get into the hotel and everybody's supposed to be, like, resting, I would go on my um, laptop because I bring it with me on my iPad and then I'll try to do some work there. And then wow. try to interact because like, you don't want it to be where you come back and then there's a test and then you aren't ready for this test. It's because it, it's like that sometimes. It, ha it had happened to me like a number of times before. Yeah. So where, where did this balance come from? I think that's a lot of dedication. I mean, you're on a, you're on a trip, um, maybe in Texas, California, I don't know, even... South America, y'all go everywhere, right? But you're on a trip, 
you're competing, and the first thing you do is make sure that your grades are right. Do you think that assists with maybe um, a little bit more of your mental stability as you go into to the competition? Well, I, I do it. I think it does, actually. And then again, um, I was a high school athlete, so I did have the balance both school and athletics. And then mm-hmm. going to college with, where it was even harder, um, there was times where you, could, where you were like, I don't want to do this. But then again, it's always that commitment that I've got. Like, it started to build up when I came into contact with Tudo because Tudo takes a lot of commitment, honestly. With the training and where you want to be at the Tudoka in the squad, it takes a lot. So I guess basically, and like my coaches, they would understand if I have like this part of school to do or that part of school because. Then again, we are, you know, student athletes, as Mr. Rose said, students. So, so you, you mentioned a good point, student athletes, right? Um, compare your experience as a student athlete now to what you had formerly before we introduced you to, to the College of the Bahamas. Wow. Um, so it was kind of hard to talk about the lectures. So, like, if we had, like, a meet over the weekend, it wouldn't be no leeway as it was for student athletes when it came to us having to travel because it was before I was still in Tudo and when I was in the university they would allow us to they would send us a, a letter from the Bahamas Federation to give to the lecturers but the some lecturers wouldn't really wow it. wow hold on hold on you're traveling on behalf of your nation yeah to represent the Bahamas and you're saying lecturers would give you a hard time. Wow. That is, that's, um, I don't know who the lecturers are, but we need to really put first what is first. You're representing, you're carrying, you know, yourself as an ambassador of the country. Yeah. And they just stress you, man, come on, man. Oh, boy. I... You have people like that in this world. So um, with that, I, for the most part, some of them would understand. Others wouldn't. So with those others, you still have to do work while you on the plane, flying to different countries. Even if you chat like anything, they one day are working, you still got to give it in. So it wasn't as easy as it is with being a student athlete. Mm-hmm. We have somebody in the timeline being petty. Yes, this is water and the AC on too. That's why I'm sweating. Dash it. Anybody being watching, I've been sweating most episodes. That's your business. I ain't sweating today. Go mangoes. Um, so back to sense. Uh, I'm thinking about it, and it's sounding that it's really sounding like the university athletics program made your experience easier. It made it more accommodating. Um, and what about the benefits? Do the benefits make a difference? The the assistance with maybe practice or the meal plan, and even financial aid. Do those things make a, a difference for you as a student athlete? I mean, yes, yes, it does. It makes a well, it makes quite a difference. Because then um, it not only helps you to, like, interact with others, it helps you to – it doesn't really – you focusing on athletics when it comes Mm -hmm. to this whole – but all they introduce, like, the study hall where you can actually go with your teammates and we study. And then we have the the food – the food. Say the food. (laughs) Say the food. The food. Yeah. I don't, it's a competition. It's you, Kendrick, and, and Tiggy. All three of y'all, when it comes to the food, y'all two and switch. Like, it's just, I mean, that is, that is help. Saving you some money. And then, you know, when you come into school, you already got yourself a meal. So you don't have to worry about that side at all, the day. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So give us a, give us a, a insight into the daily routine. Give us one of those busy schedules with practice. How, how would your day go? Wow. Well, Practice has adjusted, um, but usually, was when we first um, began this incorporation with the university as Judo being a new sport, we would train really hard. We would train in the morning, so we would wake up 6 a.m. We'd have to meet at the dojo. We would do training, probably run mm-hmm. around our daily path, and then after training, go to school. We have our regular school, and then at 6 p.m., be back at the dojo and be working, working, working until about 9 p.m. And then it happens all over again. So 
after nine, you do your school, whatever homework you have, whatever readings you have, and then the day starts over. So it was quite busy. Now, I'm curious. Judo is a, a sport that, that takes agility and strength, right? So is there a time when the team goes in the gym as well? Yes. Yes. Hold on, the wait. Hold on, first of all, you have two one jeans. Your whole voice changed. You was like, Jim. I think <laughs> um, when it comes to judo, and it, even it being an individual sport, it's still group. Like, everything we do is group. And I guess it's because of the dojo that we have, that we have, we all focus on family. So it's not just, oh, judo, the sport. It's judo is like, that's how they look at it. And that's how they enforced us to look at it. So if we go to do judo, this place, we got to do it as a team. If we're going to do weightlifting, we got to do that as a team. And even if it's just females and males, we want to make sure that everybody is participating together. So we do have, like, our designated gym times throughout the day. Mm. So, yeah, even before we go to we have gym, then our evening training, and then it starts over sort of again. So you've now been with us for three years. I feel like it's four or five, but I get no three years, and you've you've grown from you know Raven freshman to Raven a team leader, and the team has even changed. You know, it used to be male and female, now it's only female. Talk about that transition and and uh, and what what the team is doing now, and how you feel about it as now you're a leader. Well, I feel as though the team. Um, even though they, we might be small in number, I think that's a bit temporary because, you know, as we introduce judo more to the island, it becomes more of, okay, I'm interested in this sport, let me try it out. So we do have, like, a lot of people that are interested, they are trying to make our national, you know, expectation. So with us having the female team, um, I would say it's a bit more competitive because we have some females in the same division, some in other divisions, and then we know having to fight these people when we do like randori or practice fighting, we be more um we be more what's the word? Like we know ready condition. This is our because because we always fight each other. So when it comes to me going to practice Bandorian with Brianna, I would, okay, I know Brianna's going to do this and that. And then we try to, you know, test, test each other. Like, we know, okay, try to switch it up, try to understand. And if we fall in this area, we help each other on that level because we understand what it is that, you know, we kind of going through practicing with each other. And then traveling, it was, you know, traveling would always be fun. Like, when you're traveling together, we would, like, prep ourselves for the fight coming up. Even with the males, we would prep ourselves. We would, like, be like, Ray, you got it. Or, you know, this person, you got it. Make sure, you know, you keep yourself this way. But like I mm-hmm. said, family, no matter the number, it's still, you know, together. All right. And I want to say, I see someone is asking um, the live. The live is posted on our feed right after the interview. It stays on the feed. You're free to go back to it. You can screenshot. You can share that information. But it's always going to be right here at Mangos 242. So, Raven, this has been a great um, interview. You've talked not only of leadership, but how you balance your academics and your sports and how you're being a leader. But now it's time to hit that part I love. Let's talk about love. love. Let's talk about love. You know, okay. let's talk about loving people. Let's talk about loving persons around you. Let's talk about loving the spirit of the mango raven. That's what we want to talk about. You have a good athletic spirit. And you're one of the first students who ever came to a sporting game. It was my first homecoming. And you had your mango scare and you had pride and you were shouting, where does this spirit come from? Well, I, you know, going, for the, going to a school that just transitions into a university, not only that gives you something to be proud about, but then it's also people that you know that are out there cheering for you also. So, you know, you're cheering for, yes, you're cheering for people to encourage and better the, the school. And then, you know, as you, like, join a school, this level, that level of, you know, love comes in. It's just... <laughs> I had fun with that just now. That was so fun. Shout out to the basketball team. You're smart in your look. But um, 
Um, literally, um, I want to say you've fallen in love with something that I had the pleasure of creating. And you're, re you're really one of those faces I think of any time I'm down. Like, it, 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 just to see somebody screaming, you be mangoes or go mangoes, it really, really uh, lightens up my day. So thank you, firstly. Yep. Now, let's have a little fun. Everybody had a game. I didn't actually prepare a game for you. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, to, let me see. You're a physical lady, right? Yeah. And you know, you know a lot about judo. So if you had to wrestle or go judo with any guy on a UB Mingos team, who do you think you could definitely take without a problem? Someone I could definitely take. Any, any, any Mingos team. You know what? Yeah, open it up. All genders. If right. every, every, and, but mind you, everybody's fit. Everybody, you know, they, they got a little strength in them. But you're a judo expert. Who it is, if you had to challenge off another team, would you say, let's do this? And you know, yeah, you know, I got this for sure. First of all, your friend from Grenada said anyone. Wow, that's great. <laughs> like, okay. I feel like I feel like anyone for real. Like I really do. I really do because I wouldn't want to be like, I got this person for sure because you don't want to underestimate anybody because you know they, mm. you know you don't see it but they do win it. So I would say, probably anyone. Like once they come up to me and they wanna they wanna do this, I say, hey, see the gear, put it on, let's do this because I don't know at the heart. I don't want to underestimate anybody who, you know, be around. Say you got back up all the way from Grenada. Spices, spices. All right, cool. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, that is our interview. I have one final question, but you're free to leave any questions you have for Raven in the comment section as we come to a close of this off season. My question, my final question is, where is Miss Penniman going to be in five years from now? Well, as I am studying psychology, I do plan to go abroad. And my field of psychology that I'm focusing on is military psychology. So with military psychology, I'm looking at the PTSD aspect as well as leadership in individuals from the youth up. And with that, I would plan to bring it back to the Bahamas and to do something that no one has ever done before. So, yeah, that's what I'm planning on doing within the next five years. Hey, I think you're going to do it. Um, I think it's needed. A lot of Royal Bahamas Defense Force officers and defense, and Royal Bahamas Police Force officers, who are my friends, I'm only talking about the ones who are my friends, have let themselves go. There's something going on up there. Like, it's, there's something that they need to have a discussion about, whether it's fitness or mental well-being, on a serious note. So I, I think that's very courageous. I think it's needed, and I hope you are going to be our first military psychologist. Uh, I still wanted to be the first positive psychologist, but I got enough positivity in me for everybody. I need the degree. <laughs> so um, we're, we're taking questions. Raven, you did wonderful in this um, interview. Uh, you're also an award-winning UBI league, right? You got a, a main goals award before? Um, no, but I was You're nominated? Yeah. Okay. And if anybody didn't know, the main goals award is like the Grammy for us, you know? So um, if you all, yeah. Man, that's a big thing to be nominated. So we have a few people in. We'll take some questions. If no questions, then definitely um, I'll let you give any final word about recruitment. Um, you're doing a lit job. It's only compliment. Like everybody has something positive to say. Come on. Give a questions, man. While we wait for them to give you a question, my, my thing I'm thinking of is what advice would you give any young lady looking to be recruited by the judo program at the University of the Bahamas? Well, first of all, try out because, like, that's probably the most fair thing for most people to do. When they see us throwing each other, then they'd be like, oh, that's not me. I'm not going to try it. I'm not going to learn how to do that. So, yeah, once they, once they are determined, they put their mind to actually going ahead to participate in this sport, then you just take the baby step, find out who's in charge of it, then you, as soon as you find out who's in charge, even if you don't know what you're doing, they mentor you, they let you understand what it is that you need to be doing from what it is like, y'all, what you're supposed to be doing from, it's like from the inside out. And it's also like a way of life. It's just a, there's certain things that you should be doing. First.
See me? Yeah, I get it. Certain, okay. certain things you shouldn't be doing. And it, it's just like you wouldn't really know until you actually put your foot your front. So, yeah, with that, I would like if any other female or male that is interested. In the squad, try to reach out to all those that are in charge of it, or those that you know through the squad, like myself, that are out of it. Excellent. We have our first question. How do you feel about the upcoming season? Um, how do you think, sorry, how do you feel the upcoming season will be for you? Well, thank you, brother, for this question. I feel like the upcoming season, well, with all this quarantine, this quarantine thing going on, gives us a lot of time to actually put it or time to do that little extra something while you know when practice actually comes into play you're more equipped more well you know so i feel like with this upcoming season i am so looking forward to it because i've been waiting for a fight for a really long time and this should be quite interesting <laughs> i don't i ain't gonna lie visually when you say i've been waiting in the fight i pictured you through corona like lockdown that's you know what when i get up there yeah when i get up there like working on now it's dope Next question. How do you think they can improve judo program or athletic program on the whole in the country, I guess, the meaning? Okay. Well, thank you, their sister, for giving me another question. I feel like the athletic program can improve. Um, I mean, basically, what we're suffering from is the fun. And I, I don't think that's something that they could improve in. Basically, because our funds do come from the government, and even with the judo program, the outreach for funds is probably the most hardest thing. We have the talent, we have the determination, the um commitment, but it's just the experience that we're lacking. So, us trying to encounter other fights with different countries or other fights with different states, that's probably the the hardest thing for us now. So, if they can improve that, then probably be on our way out we have another question um do you ever feel anxious thinking about injuries going in to or out of fights well no i don't think about the injuries because like then that will build nerve and if you're nervous and to go in the fight then you you don't start off on the wrong path when you go to a fight you should be confident you should be like um there's this prayer that i say before i step on the mat and that is made the best athlete win so it's basically you don't know how hard another person has been training or what all they show you so even with my um national team members they be putting in the work they be trying to make sure they want to be on top because we do fight for a top position in that national sector and with that it's a lot of dedication and commitment for our two favorite words for this whole thing um I feel like when you go on to a mat, injury should be the last thing to focus on because if you go on and this girl, she can't sweep my leg and I'd be like, oh, my ankle, she's going to kill me because I'm thinking about my ankle. You shouldn't be thinking about something that you should put your mind forward. The first thing you should think is I'm going to win this. And then you, you dominate afterwards. You let them know that, okay, I come in for you. And then afterwards, if you, if you lose, that's a learning experience. Now you know okay, not to do this anymore. So, judo, learning experience, basically. Injury. That's a great That's a great mentality. I'm curious. Do you all have a chant? Like, I know softball has that one, two, three, eight, you know, and then, you know, basketball have that, you know, only, what is it? Just us or something? I don't know what this is. They say something. Anyway, but what judo have? Like, what's the judo chant or what's that energizing thing you guys do? So, well, when we were training for the junior worlds, our, um, coach sensei Onasi, he would give us a chant that they came up with and he would said he would say judo and we would say it's life and he would say judo is life and it's just something that they they wanted us to like a mentality they wanted us to grow into where we would say judo is life and if anybody has something to say about it just tell them judo is life judo is life so basically that's our little chant stolen Stolen 2020 new chant on the four. Forget go mangoes, just mangoes is life. I like it. I like it. It was invented here first, copywritten by me. Okay. Uh, killing it, Randy. Killing it. 
<laughs> but um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's about our time. I want to I want to thank you, Raven. I didn't see any more questions. I'll give it a, a few more seconds. I don't want to let anybody miss the opportunity. But I want to thank you, Raven, for answering these questions, for taking this time for us to learn you as an athlete. Um, you're definitely a very intelligent woman. You bring a lot to the table, and you are definitely going to be very successful in pursuits of military psychology. Um, somebody said thief. We don't talk like that on this page. You'll be banned. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> but again, uh, this has been off season with Raven. Thank you to Ghost. It almost looked like it said Ghost Raven, but I'm just going to call you Ghost Grenado. That's what you could be. Spices. Right. Anyway, and I want to give a shout out to him, your friend, for tuning in. I think it's very encouraging to know that somebody from international, you know, somebody abroad, has tuned in just to see your interview. So, how are we He's, He's like a computer. Right. Well, yeah, talk, you know what, in, in respect for who he is and for being here from the first second you logged on, please tell us how you two became friends. Okay. Oh, this Rufus. I know Rufus. Well, he participated in the Commonwealth Youth Games that, uh, three summers ago. That's 2017. Yeah. So, yeah, we were uh, walking. And, you know, boxing, he does boxing. Boxing. Mm -hmm. It happened in the same area. So when we were setting up for boxing, and we, you know, started to interact with that, and trying to break down the judo. So it's just, yeah. So as a boxer, did he come up and say, hey, let me help you warm up and do you, like, he, you just throw him around the mat or something? That's how you became friends? No. Like, did he, like, try to throw a punch? You, like, dodge it easy and then threw him over the shoulder? He's like, you know what? You could be my friend because I don't fight you. Like, is there a story behind it? But the trading of pins basically oh okay okay that's dope that's dope um what is it that's when they had i don't know what he said it's like kendo. Man, that's when they had oh yeah 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 that's when they had it in kendo yes but ladies and gentlemen again and rufus thank you for tuning in this has been off season with raven and you have a great day um enjoy yourself and be safe wash your hands cover up yourself and practice social distancing thank you